Okay, so it's been a while since we've talked about the honeybees and the flow supers out in my apiary. So let's do an update since we've come out of winter and we went through a full winter with flow supers on the beehives and in some cases I took the flow supers off and we're going to see the comparison. There's another issue that's come out that we're going to talk about in the last half of this presentation. So first we have the flow super that was taken off a beehive after the colony had used most of its resources and I'm going to show you what the stored flow frames looked like. Now whenever you're taking apart a beehive always make sure to have a bucket or something nearby where you can take wax and propolis scrapings and put those in there. Um, there's always somebody that wants beeswax or propolis. Now you can see they have emptied this out and what's left is solidified honey. So this is considered crystallized or solidified um, honey. So you're just looking at sugar crystals really and the bees do come back and consume these. This whole side was full of solidified honey and the bees took it out. And then of course I removed the super about midwinter because they had plenty of resources in the lower medium super for that colony. So I just wanted to show physically what these flow frames go through. And this is a nice close look at the cells. They're nice and clean and there's nothing on this flow frame at all except uh, the leftovers from the honey that they once stored. Now this is not one of the flow hive supers that uh, we drew honey off of in the past. I left it all on for the bees. And you can see that the propolis has really made it challenging to pull these frames out. And there you have it, even more uh, solidified honey. And we're uncapping it and uh, everything in this frame is partially liquid but uh, definitely not usable and you could not operate the flow frame uh, with this residue in its condition. So there are a couple of options uh, when it comes to cleaning this out and it's a question that I often get. What would you do if the honey became candied inside these flow frames? Because of course it's a mechanism that has to function in order to drain honey. And you'll notice too that the stainless steel cords that hold the flow high components together has been propolized primarily on top, not so much on the underside. And here is some where the center section, if you can see the difference, is still liquid honey and could be uncapped and extracted if you wanted to. You can take a flow super, although these flow frames are designed um, to drain the honey through the mechanism. But if you needed to and you had some that was solidified and some that's still liquid as this frame is, you could uncap it, put it in a spinner and spin it out traditionally. Of course, that defeats the whole purpose of the flow hive mechanism. And now this is a, you know, a robust colony of bees and I'm going to take this frame and I'm going to put the flow super on it and allow these bees to clean it out. Another clean out option would be just to take the flow frames out and spray them out with a power washer and I have one of those but here I'd rather see how well the bees clean it out themselves. All of the frames that you're looking at here are a form of plastic. There is one wooden frame there but uh, the black and the white are both Pirgo design and later on we'll be talking in another video about the new uh, triple wax coated frames that are made by a company called Acorn. And you can see that the population of uh, this colony is really high and this is early in the spring, one of the few warm days that we had. We've had really erratic weather conditions where it would get very cold and then warm and then cold again and that took a huge toll on bee populations and apiaries across the state of Pennsylvania. Some longtime beekeepers have reported losses of 50% or even higher in some cases. So now we're going to put the, uh, this is my original flow super that I did my original review on. And uh, it was exposed to the cold all winter long. It was just removed from the colony. Oh, 
always make sure that all the components still work when you're putting it back on a colony and that there won't be any binding or problems, and there isn't. This came through just fine. All the plastic components are fine. They're unaffected by cold. And the box uh, is a little weathered, and that's expected. I made my own uh, inner covers for these things so that it would be thick enough that when you put a telescoping cover over the top, it will not interact with the mechanisms that uh, you need to remove in order to operate the flow frames. And then just a standard telescoping top with a uh, zinc coated tin cover. Just making sure that I can still access everything since we're kicking off the new season here. And what you're looking at is one of our early warm days. In fact, probably one of the first times I can actually get out in the apiary and check things out. So the bees are immediately right up in the frames and it shows, this is of course the end panel which faces the east in my apiary and there's the little logo embossed in that removable panel. And I felt like you might need a uh, chicken fix here for those who are looking for my chicken videos. We'll just show this rooster that happened to be walking by. Now, this brings us to today, and the reason I wanted to get this video out right away to those who are waiting for Flow Hive updates. In the past, I've had a lot of questions about why I don't use queen excluders in my aviary, and if you don't use a queen excluder, would the bees go up into the flow super and in the flow frames, and would the queen actually lay her eggs in those mechanisms? And that would be a bad thing. Uh, if you've heard me talk before, I've always said that I don't use queen excluders in my apiary, and that's because it slows down honey production so much as some of the workers can't get through those queen excluders. Well, when it comes to the flow hive and that mechanism, you're about to see why putting a queen excluder in your flow hive system between the brood boxes and your actual flow supers is very important. We did actually get brood in the flow frames, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. We have terrific weather right now. We've come out of a lot of rain, and just look at all the colors of pollen that's coming in on the hind legs of these workers. You'll also notice that we have an abundance of drones, and that means with this immediate buildup of numbers in this colony that we could be facing swarm conditions soon. So for me, that means it's time to start thinking about splitting these colonies up and making some new colonies for observation. And you'll notice too, this is an upper entrance. The upper entrance is much busier than the lower landing board entrance, and all of my bee uh, hives have an upper and a lower landing board entrance. Now we're looking at uh, the frames of the one that I showed at the beginning of this video, and they are cleaned out nicely. Now if you look, I get questions sometimes when people see down in the corners of this viewing frame that it looks like the mechanism was partially activated or some of the cells look a little skewed. That's really a visual distortion and if you can look across the surface of these things, uh, they are properly aligned. What happens is the surface is irregular, so they're not drawn out even as they would be if this were straight wax and they're just cleaning it up. So all of the honey that you saw and the candied honey and the solidified sugar crystals that were in the cells before are now completely gone and this colony is really ramping up for our spring nectar flow. You'll notice there's even a little humidity building up on the inside of this uh, clear plastic panel. And this is again just another view, same colony. And this is the one, remember, that the colony was not left on through winter. So the numbers are, are very strong. Now we're going to get into the colony that was um, benefiting from the flow frames throughout winter. 
So they came up into this Flow Super and used up all the honey resources that were in it. And this is a close up to show you the cells are absolutely clean as a whistle. And there's something going on here that you wouldn't notice just looking at the end frames. And that is that we've actually had the queen come up into this flow super, which is near the top of this uh, hive. And she actually started laying in the cells. That's a question I get frequently. What would you do if the queen started laying in the cells? Well, we made lots of excuses about that. Number one, the queen would be primarily active in the lower boxes. We have two deeps on this colony, so it was highly unlikely that she would come up into the flow supers and use these deep plastic cells, which again are very deep and kind of unusual for a queen to be attracted to for laying. But what we're looking at right here is the eastern panel that is exposed now because we took the cover off. And inside these flow supers, the plastic cells are clean as a whistle, except for those that have now developing brood in them. And when we're looking at this light yellow, somewhat convex surface on these cells, this is different from honey stored caps because those you would see would be slick, somewhat shiny, and somewhat concave. When it comes to brood cells, they're always slightly convex. And of course the material is more fibrous so that the developing brood can breathe through them. And if you look top center here, um, you'll see what I call Michelin men. And those are developing baby bees, the little grubs that are in the cells. So the queen has been all the way up into the flow supers and she's been laying in the mechanism. All the cells are synthetic. They're nothing but plastic. And the only thing that the bees are providing is the egg. They sealed the uh, frame, of course the queen provides the egg, and then the workers are putting royal jelly into the cells, and some of them are really shiny. You can see that they have those resources provided. And they're capping them off, and these are workers. So the queen has taken over the flow super in this case, and the plastic mechanized flow frames, and is using them to lay eggs and raise brood. So, now what does that mean for me? Well, I'm not into beekeeping for the honey, but if you are doing this for honey, of course, it completely arrests the function of your flow frame. So you will not be able to use this flow frame for honey extraction while it's being used for brood. The other thing that I was always commenting about is if they were going to go and lay in these frames, I would allow it simply so we could observe it and see what happens. And of course, here we are a year from um, my first purchase and installation of flow frames and they're using them. Now keep in mind the reason that they're using these for brood is because there is no queen excluder. So what I'm telling you is to make sure that you do use the provided queen excluder above the brood boxes on your flow hive and below the flow supers that holds these mechanized flow frames. Otherwise, you'll have what I have in this case, which right now is just a very expensive brood box. And you can see the bees attending to those grubs in there. So now this is the difference. What we're looking at is, just in case it has anything to do with the way they're organized on the colonies, number four is the one that has brood in the flow frames. And those flow frames are the third box from the bottom on the right. So the activity at the landing board is normal. Keep in mind, we have temperatures in the high 20s, low 30s still at night. So my entry reducers are still on. Look at the activity on the upper entrance. And then there's the top box. Now this is the one that does not have brood in it. And now we go to number four here. And this is the one, look, we have a deep. The box with the number four is the second deep. So the third box up is the flow hive or the flow super. And that's the one with flow frames in it. And that's also the one that has now lots of brood being 
developed in those mechanized frames. And then above that is a shallow super that also has honey in it already. So lesson learned, if you do not put a queen excluder underneath your flow super, it is possible that you could have the queen up in your flow frames laying her eggs in those plastic cells. For me, it's just a learning experience. For you, it could be catastrophic if you're counting on getting honey from those flow frames, and that is their purpose. So I'm glad to share that with you, and I'm also glad that now you have an opportunity to see that a queen can and will lay her eggs inside the plastic flow fr frames if there is no queen excluder beneath it. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something through my demonstration here. If you have a flow hive and a flow super, make sure you put a queen excluder beneath it. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll follow us as we do other honeybee videos.